Conditional formatting is a fundamental data visualization technique that allows you to present and highlight the information that your users need to see. But here's the problem. This is often done in a very static way where once we've defined the rules, that's essentially what your users see. And the problem with that is your users today need to look at, let's say, the top five, but tomorrow they need to investigate the bottom three. This is where we can utilize dynamic conditional formatting to really take your visuals to that next level where your users can adjust the thresholds, filter out certain data points, choose the top five or the bottom six, whatever they want to do, you can do so using dynamic measures. It's really easy to implement, so let's go ahead and get started. the data set that I'm using, you can find that by signing in, heading over to the community tab where all the files are available. And on that note, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a clustered column chart. So for my X axis, I'm going to bring in subcategory. And then for my Y axis, I'm going to bring in our cells. But let's go ahead and create a measure for that. So if we select new measure, and then call this sales, and then do a sum of our sales column, and bring this into our Y axis, we now have our chart that's essentially ready for our conditional formatting, which is dynamic, and then our filtering as well based on our user input. Now to make the rest of our calculations easier to understand, let's go ahead and create a new table where we bring in our subcategory and then our cells, just so our future calculations are easier to understand. Now, essentially our dynamic conditional formatting is going to be based on a rank. So at the moment, our cells, so our highest cells, we want that to be one then our lowest cells, we want that to be the lowest value based on how many rows we have. So to do that, let's go ahead and create a new calculation. So create a new measure and let's call this sales rank. And if we use the rank X function and then say, remove all filters from our subcategory and then rank it by our cells. And then we want that to be descending. So in terms of the actual rank and then dense, let's go ahead and bring that into our table and see what it's doing. So we can see that our highest cells is one, then our least is 17. So we have 17 sort of values and that's our rank order. Now, based on our selection, so if we select top, let's say we want to see our top three. Currently that will work, but if we want to select our bottom three, well, that's not going to work because the rank order is different. So we want our order to change based on our selection. So let's go ahead and create that disconnected table where we have our two options. So if we select home and then enter data and then call this table, let's say top slash bottom, then for our selection options, once again, let's call that top and then bottom. And then for our column header, let's just call that selection. And now that we have our table, let's go ahead and create a slicer and bring those two options in. So we have our top and bottom options, but this is not currently connected to our rank. So what we have to do is use a function called selected value. So let's go ahead and create a calculation for that and actually see what that function does. So if we call this selected value, and then the calculation is literally selected value and then our selection column. And if we bring that new calculation into a card, let's go ahead and see what it's doing. So at the moment, bottom is selected. And then if we select top, we then have top. So we can then incorporate our selected value calculation into our rank. So let's go ahead and take a look at our rank calculation and take it uh, to that dynamic level. So to do so, if we say if, and then if we say our selected value, so our calculation equals top, then we want it to return this sort order. So one, two, three, based on the maximum cells. But then if our cells is, if our selected value is not top, then we want it to do the same calculation. So let's copy this. But this time we want the order to be ascending. So if we take a look at this calculation, what is it doing? We have, if our selected value equals top, then give us a descending order. And if it's not top, then give us the opposite. So let's go ahead and update our calculation and see what it's doing now. So right now we have top selected and we can see our highest cells is one. And then if we select bottom, we can now see that our, our bottom cell is one. So this will now make our options actually consistent. So if we select, we want to see our top five, it will show us our top five. If we say we want to see our bottom five, 
it has that same order as well. So top, that's our top five. Then if we select bottom, now that is our bottom five. So we've created our dynamic slicer that allows us to change between top and bottom. Let's create our input box that determines how many values are highlighted or filtered out. So for example, we want to see the bottom three or the top seven, we can input that value. So if we go to modeling, new parameter, and then numeric range, we can see the maximum is set to 20. So our sales rank goes up to 17, so that's fine. Then our minimum starts from one. So let's go ahead and change that to one. And then the name of this, let's call this numeric range. And if we load this in, we can see that it will auto create a slicer, but in our table, we have a column and we can create that as well. So let's go ahead and turn off the slider and then the slicer header. And then for our values, let's make it slightly bigger so we can see it. I'm just going to make this slightly smaller. And then if we enter three or four, we can see we can actually input a value. Now, right now, this is not connected to any of our data. So, so let's create a measure that actually makes that data connected to our sales rank. So we're going to create a new measure and we're going to call this data labels. And if we do, uh, let's create a variable and call this selected. And we're going to write selected value and then the numeric range. So that column that we created for the range. And what we're going to say is if the sales rank is less than or equals to our selected, return the sales amount, otherwise return a blank. So let's go ahead and bring that into our table and see what it's doing. So we can see we have our selected value. So in our calculation, this is the numeric range as four. So our selected value is four and the sales rank we're saying, if the sales rank is less than or equals to four, so we have four, if it's less than that, show a sales amount, otherwise show blank. And if we select top, once again, we can see we have four selected. If the sales rank is less than or equals to our selected value, so four, all of these values are less than four, then return the actual value. So we can see now this is becoming very dynamic where, where we adjust this is looking at our sales rank and then our selected value and it's returning all those. So let's go ahead and apply this to our visual by going to data labels and then value. And then instead of sales, we can choose data labels. And now, so if we change this to free, for example, we can see it's completely dynamic. If we did bottom, it is now doing less than three or equals to as well. Hence why we created that dynamic rank calculation based on our selection. So it makes it consistent where we just have to use one slicer. So we have our data labels that are completely dynamic. Now we need to take a look at the bars. So for our bars, we're going to create a new measure and we're going to call this bars format. And then once again, we're going to create a variable for this selected. And we're going to do selected value. And then we're going to do numeric range. Uh, return. And then a simple if statement. So it's a logical condition. We're saying if our sales rank is less than or equals to our selected value and the selected value, so selected value, and then our selection equals top return green. So let's go ahead and get the color. And what this is saying is if the sales rank is less than whatever this value is and the selection equals top return green, otherwise let's return a blank. So let's go ahead and bring this into our column format. So if we go to columns, color, and then field value and set this to bars format and click OK. If we select top, we're going to see that this goes green, but we haven't done anything for our bottom. So if we go back to our bars format, we can just add a if statement here. So another condition. So now we want to say, so let's delete this. We're saying if that condition is not true and the selected value is bottom, let's go ahead and make this red. I'm going to insert the color code. And then if neither are selected or applicable, let's go ahead and just return gray. Uh, let's go ahead and return gray. And if we take a look at our calculation, we can see the logic is top is selected. The three is our selected value and it's less than our sales rank. So these three bars and then everything else doesn't meet this condition, hence why it's gray. 
And if we select bottom, we're going to see it works the other direction as well. So we have our dynamic bars. If we wanted to change this so it filters our data, instead of using cells in this axis, we can then just bring in our data labels instead. And now it would actually just change what we see based on our selection to bottom or top. And that's because our values and what we have in here, if the condition is not met, so anything above five, we want that to be blank, hence why it's not appearing in this table. But let's go ahead and bring back in our cells. And what we're going to do now is create our buttons. So moving on to our final piece is creating our dynamic button. So to do that, we're going to create a tile slicer. So let's convert our selection to a tile slicer. And then from there, we're going to create a new measure. So this is for our formatting of our buttons. So let's call this button colors. And what we're going to do is if the selected value, so selected value, and then let's use our selection. So this is top or bottom. If it equals, if it equals top, then we want to return green, otherwise return red. So let's just bring in our color codes. And if we apply that now to our button, what we can do one is turn off title. And then if we go to buttons and then go to uh, selected and then fill, let's go ahead and apply our fill. So if we select field value and then buttons, so our, not bars format, our button colors, let's go ahead and apply that. So now if we have top selected, that's green. And if we have bottom selected, that's green as well. Now, right now we can see it's 0% transparency. So for our default state, let's go ahead and apply that again. So field value and then our button colors. But for our default, we want the transparency to be 85%. So if we have top selected, oh, that didn't work right. Let's take a look. And then for our selected, we want our transparency to be 100%. There we go. So let's go ahead and now format this button. So what we're going to do is go to uh, shape, change this to rounded rectangle. Let's bring our corners to something where we're comfortable with. Let's adjust this, go to call out values. Let's center that. And then we can mess around with our hover state. So if we say our call out values in the default state are a gray, and then, or let's actually use a darker gray. And then in our selected state, we want that to be a white, but slightly bigger. So let's set that to eight and then do the same for our borders. So for our borders, we haven't actually applied anything. So let's go ahead and go to field value and use the same logic that we did there. So button colors and for our default as well, let's apply that. Uh, button colors oh and then for our let's apply button colors and we can see we now have our selections where we can switch between